Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. So today we're going to be reacting to Do You Think You Will Enter Jenna by Omar Suleiman? So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dear brothers and sisters, last week we spoke about the where. Where to, O oh Allah, where is my destination? And we said that you cannot get past a trial or a test unless you submit yourself in regards to the where and in unless you su submit yourself in regards to the when, meta. Mata Nasrullah. When is the help of Allah going to come? As human beings, we are driven crazy by uncertainty and the lack of closure, not knowing when it's all going to end. Yaquluna Mata Hadal Wa'du in Kuntum Sadiqim. When is the day of judgment? If we all knew when our lives would expire, how different would our lives be? Right? We would know exactly when to run a little faster, one just like with any other race, right? When to pace ourselves in a certain way, and then when to make that final sprint. But we don't know. Mata, you have absolutely no idea. And that requires a tawakkul that is very different because you have to submit the need to know when. You have to submit the idea of closure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can't do that unless you have certainty in the destination. Now I wanted to actually speak about this verse tonight or today because it has a meaningful connotation to the historical context that it's placed in that I think is often lost upon us as we are reading through it. It shows up in Surah Al-Baqarah. Am an jannah? Do you think you will enter into Jannah? Do you think you will enter into paradise? وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُرْزِرُوا And then you hear of those that came before you. And how they were struck with al-ba'sa, which is suffering. And some of the mufassirun say it refers specifically to al-faqr, to poverty here. وَالضَّرَّاءُ They were struck with their health. All types of external hardship and internal hardship. Both of them connected to one another. وَزُرْزِرُوا And the fears that shook them. They were shaking. There was such a level of fear that overtook them and uncertainty. Until it got to the point that the Messenger of Allah and the believers with him said, When is the help of Allah going to come? Verily, the help of Allah is nearby, it's close to you. What is the historical context of this verse? And I want us to situate ourselves in it for a moment and think about how we would feel. You know, it's convenient for us to read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ now and say, I wish I could have been there in Badr and Uhud and Khandaq. I would have certainly been on the side of the Prophet ﷺ. I would have strove. I would have never fled the battlefield. I would have never been dissuaded by the hypocrites. I would have been able to overcome all of the pressures. I would have stood firm with the Prophet ﷺ. The reality is, it's hard to know that. It's hard to know that. And Allah places us at our times and places for reasons that are not known to us. But this verse, dear brothers and sisters, according to the majority of the Mufassirun, came in regards to Khandaq, the battle of Khandaq. So let me give you what that historical context is like for a moment. 25 to 30 days completely under siege by the largest army that the Arabs have ever seen in their existence. You are under siege from all directions by an army that has shown its willingness to mutilate you because this is coming off of the heels of Uhud where they showed their cruelty to their own family members as they cut them into pieces and mutilated them after death. And they have surrounded you from all directions and they intend to not leave anyone alive by the end of this. Every direction is surrounded and all you have is the strategy that you've never tried before of a ditch that's been built. 
where each person has to watch every single part of the trench to make sure that it's not penetrated by that large army. One mishap, one opening means the end of everyone in Medina because they can all make it through that one opening if that one opening fails. So the pressure of everyone that's having to watch the opening. You have people on the inside that you know now have betrayed you and that are coordinating with the outside. You're hungry. You have a shortage of food and supplies. The people ran out of food. Think about that. They don't have food anymore and they don't have the time to make food or to make their way so that they can have those supplies prepared for themselves. The Messenger of Allah's stomach is bloated out of starvation. And he has two stones tied to his stomach. How do you sleep at night? It's cold at night. People are malnourished. They're afraid. And on top of that, you have the demoralizing hypocrites on the inside that are saying, مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا SubhanAllah, I mean, I can't imagine hearing those words in those moments. There are people on the inside that said, Allah and His Messenger promised us nothing but delusion. This whole thing was delusion. We should not have done this. We should not have taken Him in. We knew this was going to happen. Some of us told you. But you went to Mecca and you brought him here and the only thing he promised you was what? Jannah. That's all he promised you. He didn't promise you anything but paradise as a result of taking him in alayhi salatu wasalam and committing yourself to this message. And collectively they're under siege. They're hearing demoralizing messages. How do you sleep at night? With all of these factors, you're shook. You don't know when it's going to end. And there is an army that intends to commit genocide. SubhanAllah, there are people in the world that live in similar situations of hardship under siege. Think about our brothers and sisters in Yemen. Will they die out of hunger? May Allah make it easy for them. Which missile, which party's bomb is going to fall on them? Which machine gun, which disease, which... May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Yemen and all over the world. I know I just mentioned Yemen, if I start to go down the list of Gaza and all the different places under siege, with shortage of supplies, with disease, all these things, it's so hard, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the situation of that desperation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, lifted that siege. Of course, gave the Muslims victory. The collective end of the believers is وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That victory belongs to the believers. Some people will die in the process, some people will struggle, some people will go through all sorts of oppression and will succumb to the oppression of this world. But what is the message that the ayah starts off with? أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ You made a claim that you want paradise. You centered Jannah in your pursuit. This life was going to be full of all sorts of surprises and difficulties along the way of that pursuit of goodness. Jannah is surrounded by, by thorns and hardships. It's going to be difficult. And know that the help of Allah is with your patience. But you can't be patient if you don't have certainty in paradise. SubhanAllah, it's the same message to the individual. Do people simply think, they say, we believe, and then they're left alone, they're not going to be tested? It's a wrong calculation. Your calculation has to factor in something greater than this world. It's got to factor in Jannah. Otherwise, with every Janazah that hits us, with every oppression that hits us, Every time the life of this world shows us its betrayal, we will be left without answers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, recalibrate. It's Jannah that you signed up for. Ala inna sil'at Allahi ghaliya. Ala inna sil'at Allahi al-Jannah. And these, this, this price of al-Jannah, the goods that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised is expensive. And it's Jannah, it's paradise. You have to center that. If you don't center that, it's going to be constant hardship without purpose, without explanation. Now, sometimes, like the case of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, the torture lets up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows him victory in this life before victory in the hereafter. Sometimes, like in the case of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, you die in prison. Sometimes it is 
the hardship being relieved in this world before the hereafter. Sometimes the hardship holds you until the moment of your death. And then it's the ease of the hereafter. But here's the point. And subhanAllah, there's a remarkable consistency of, this, of how this is all brought together on the community level and on the individual level. As for the community level, what was, what was the test that these companions passed? I mean, these were people in the ditch with the Prophet ﷺ who were losing everything at that moment. And some of them were there to take the first bay'ah with the Prophet ﷺ and bring him to Medina on the basis of Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ is looking at these young Ansar and Muhajirun who are digging these trenches, who are guarding everything, who are suffering all sorts of ima- unimaginable hardship. Now what is the realization? The Prophet ﷺ says, Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no living except for the living of the hereafter. Faghfir lil-ansar. So forgive the Ansar and the Muhajirun. Oh Allah, there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. That doesn't mean that we proceed through this life without purpose and we proceed through this life without any form of happiness. No, we proceed through this life with fulfillment. We've spoken about this over the last few weeks. But that the true life is not here. And that actually gives me the comfort I need to be able to live through this life with a sense of certainty and purpose. That it's not here. Oh Allah, it's not here. When the Prophet ﷺ is looking at those people that gave up everything and they're suffering in the way that they're suffering, oh Allah, it's not here. It's there. It's somewhere else. It's beyond this. And subhanAllah, the word ba'sa, the Prophet ﷺ said that on the day of judgment, yu'ta bi ashad nasi bala'an fi dunya, a person who had the worst life would be dipped in paradise one time, يُغْمَسُ فِي النَّعِيمِ غَمْسَ And it would be said to that person, هَلْ وَأَيْتَ بُؤْسًا قَتْ It's probably the same root word. Have you ever seen any misery in your life? No, I don't even know what misery is. From a dip in Jannah, I don't know what misery is. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, that same person, who went through torturer after torturer after torturer. Imam Ahmad faced, subhanAllah, all of the types of hardship. Betrayal, beatings, slander, uh, oppression, prisons, lashings, the the torture of the succession of oppressors, because one Khalifa dies and another one comes and tortures him even worse than the first one, than the one before him. And when his son asks him, Mataraha, when do we rest, O oh my father? When do we rest? Imam Ahmad had no doubt in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had no doubt in the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift these circumstances from him in this life. But he didn't answer his son and tell his son, look, just give it a few more days, a few more weeks, a few more months. It's going to come to an end, inshaAllah. What does he tell his son? Because he wants to instill something in his son. بِأَوَّلِ خُطْوَةِ With the first footstep we take in paradise. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى It's الْخُطْوَةِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ It's the footstep we take into paradise. What does that mean, dear brothers and sisters? That doesn't mean lose hope in Allah's support in this life. That means keep your hope in Allah's promise in the hereafter. That means that you keep yourself patient even when things are unimaginable and there seems to be no closure in sight in something that is greater than this world because otherwise every time the dunya betrays you, it's going to leave you speechless. And we are a people who find the paradise of certainty in the paradise in the hereafter. It's expensive, it's not easy, it's not cheap. But that's where our comfort is. That's where our certainty is. Our hopes lie in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, we know, whether it is as a community level or as an individual level, that the relief, the true relief, Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah, it's not meant to be here. It's not meant to be here. And so I submit myself to the when. I submit myself to the when. Because I understand the where. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the who, which is Him. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to connect deeply with Him and submit ourselves to Him and have full certainty in Him and have full certainty in His power and have full certainty in His paradise and have full certainty in His mercy and have full certainty in His forgiveness and have full certainty in His divine aid. The end of this ummah is victory in this life and the end of this ummah is paradise in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this life and the best of the hereafter and relieve our brothers and sisters that are suffering around the world and write for them and us the promised Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li ulaikum wa lisa'al muslimin fa astaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa lah. Dear brothers and sisters, the message is to not lose hope but to center paradise in your hope. Center Jannah, the promise of Jannah in our hopes. Keep reminding ourselves of Al-Jannah. Every time we taste the bitterness of this life, let's remember the sweetness of the hereafter ta'ala, and commit ourselves to that. Because that was what the Prophet ﷺ gave to his companions and that was what allowed them to be resilient through all of the different trials that came their way, through all of the uncertainty that came their way was a certainty in Allah and what was promised to them by Allah through the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for Al-Jannah and what brings us closest to it with our words and our actions. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for Al-Firdaus Al-A'la for what, and what brings us closer to it from words and actions. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for Al-Firdaus Al-A'la and what brings us closer to it of our words and our deeds. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for protection from Adab Al-Qabr and Adab Al-Nar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the torment of this life, the torment of the hereafter, the torment of the grave. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us victory in this life and in the next, to grant us his aid in this life and the next, to grant us his mercy in this life and the next. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a place in Al-Jannah near the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest level. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma fir al-mu'mineen wal-mu'minat wal-muslimin wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu d'awat. Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. Rabbana walamna anfusana wa illam takhfir lana wa tarahamna. Lana kunana min al-khasirin. Allahumma inna ka afu wa kareemu tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. Allahumma khfir li walidina. Rabbi rahamuhuma kama rabbawna sighara. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Waj'alna lil muttaqina imama. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zalimin. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Very interesting video I haven't listened to a message this touching for a long time this was very very amazing and i like the message that it carried it had a very very deep message everything was very easy to understand i like the fact that he mentioned um yemen and i would also like to mention uh congo not that they're not other countries suffering but congo is just one thing for me i'm sure we all know many places other than just these two otherwise at the end of the day, just because we believe there is one God doesn't um, mean we have a place in heaven. Just because we believe um, heaven exists doesn't mean we have a place in heaven. This world, this world is going to fire us flame by flame. You will go through things that you thought you wouldn't go through. Just don't bend to whatever it is don't let your problems consume you or don't let whatever you're going through consume you we can't live life life is just not uh, what can i say rosy so you're going to experience something at some point in your life 
you just have to be strong and hold that hope he was talking about hold that hope that there's a god meant for me this situation is not permanent even though i'm suffering now i'm going to get through this god is going to get me get me through this i submit myself to him there's something good waiting for you at the end of the tunnel otherwise this was a very very good message very very good message there's a lot of things so my question to you guys is do you think you will enter heaven make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video